Okay, now we're going to talk about blood. For this part on blood, we're going to first discuss what is blood. Body contains about four to five liters of blood. Well, this is for a human adult. So kids may have less blood. The purpose of blood is to transport substances to and from the cells. There are two main parts to it. We call them the cellular component and the acellular component. Now listed over here, blood comprises plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Plasma alone is what we call the acellular component. So this is no cells. The cellular part are these. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The majority of your blood's volume is plasma. So we're gonna talk about that first. What is plasma? Plasma is actually a pale yellow liquid. Of course, when you have seen blood before bleeding through your skin, it doesn't look like a pale yellow liquid. This is because it's mixed together with your red blood cells. The red blood cells give it the red color. But if we were to remove the red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets, what would be left behind is this plasma, which is really pale yellow liquid. Plasma consists mainly of water. It also contains a lot of dissolved minerals and materials such as digested food, your nutrients, such as uh, sugars, amino acids. It contains hormones and also waste substances. The general function of plasma is the general function of your blood. It's to transport substances. So that would include transporting nutrients from your intestines to your cells from your hormones, from your endocrine glands to your body cells and your waste substances from your body's cells to the kidneys for disposal. Okay, now let's talk about, now let's talk about your cells in the blood. There are three main groups. We're going to talk about red blood cells here. Red blood cells are biconcave in shape. They have a very small size. They have no nucleus. They are quite famous for this. Having no nucleus is an adaptation so that the cell can hold more hemoglobin. What is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is a protein used by red blood cells to carry oxygen. This is how your red blood cells hold oxygen. Hemoglobin is famously red in color, and this is what makes your red blood cells look so red. Hemoglobin also contains iron, the metal, and this is also quite famous. This is why blood tastes metallic. Now, since the red blood cells sacrifice their nucleus, quite important for the sake of carrying more oxygen. The red blood cells can't last long. They survive for only about 120 days, which is kind of long if you think about it. They are born in the bone marrow. The bone marrow are the inner parts of your long bones, such as your arm bone or your thigh bone just like all other cells in your blood. When a red blood cell has fulfilled its function and it's time for it to be destroyed, it will be destroyed in the liver or the spleen. Although it's not written here, it can be destroyed in the liver or spleen as well. Okay. The red blood cells are quite flexible. This allows them to squeeze through capillaries, which are very narrow. Roughly speaking, there's about 4 million to 5 million red blood cells per millimeter cube of blood. 
given this very numerous nature of your red blood cells, the microscopic size, the flexibility, the fact that they are packed full of hemoglobin, it makes them very well adapted to their main function, which is to carry oxygen from your lungs to every other part of your body to deliver them to your cells. When red blood cells containing hemoglobin absorb oxygen, they turn a bright red color. This bright red color can be used as a rough guide to how much oxygen is in the blood. When hemoglobin binds to oxygen, it is sometimes called oxyhemoglobin. If the red blood cells lose the oxygen and becomes deoxygenated blood, the red blood cells will turn a dark red. So I'll make a note here. If the blood is deoxygenated, it will be a dark red. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about white blood cells. Regarding white blood cells, there are two main types, phagocytes and lymphocytes. We can take a closer look up here. We're going to talk about white blood cells, phagocytes and lymphocytes. You can see that they look quite different in these diagrams. Most notably, pay attention to the nucleus. The phagocytes have what we call a lobed nucleus. The nucleus is strangely shaped. It's as though there are two parts to it. We call them lobes, just like your ear lobes. The lymphocyte, on the other hand, has a very large nucleus that occupies almost the entire space in the white blood cell. Okay, what is the function of phagocytes? Phagocytes are for destroying consuming or killing bacteria, they can engulf, ingest. So let's say this is a phagocyte and it detects a bacterial cell. What happens is it will engulf the bacterial cell, it will start to move and then wrap around the bacterial cell and eventually the bacterial cell will be now inside the phagocyte. Once the phagocyte has consumed its target, it will proceed to digest it and destroy it. Okay, the phagocytes are formed in the bone marrow, just like your red blood cells and any other blood cell. Special thing about the phagocytes is that they can move on their own. This is sometimes termed as amoeboid movement as shown in the diagrams I've drawn over here. The phagocytes move relatively quick compared to other cells. They can change the shape of their cytoplasm so that they can squeeze between small gaps, squeeze out of capillaries or engulf bacteria. Now, how about the lymphocytes? Lymphocytes they have a very important function. If the phagocytes are like the foot soldiers, the lymphocytes are like the special ops. Lymphocytes produce antibodies. And these antibodies are proteins that bind to bacteria or bind to any antigen or pathogen that enters your body. Lymphocytes are specialists. They produce antibodies which are specific to the target. So while phagocytes indiscriminately engulf and consume and destroy whatever they detect as a threat to the body, lymphocytes on the other hand produce antibodies which are specialized for killing whatever target they have their sights on. The lymphocytes, they are actually born in the bone marrow, but they will develop in lymph nodes found throughout your body. Lymphocytes are responsible for your long-term immunity. 
Why? The antibodies that they produce can last for a long time in your body. If the antibodies stay in your body, you will have protection against whatever they can target. However, they don't generally last forever. The lymphocytes have a limit to how long they can stay active. So after a period of time, the lymphocytes may dwindle in number and the antibody levels in your blood may decrease. However, the next time you are exposed to a new infection of the same disease-causing agent, these lymphocytes can very quickly be reactivated and large amounts of antibodies can be produced in response. And this is why we say it gives rise to long-term immunity. It is not to say that you will forever be immune to the disease, but if you are exposed to the disease, the same disease again in a new infection, you're able to respond to it much quicker. And this gives an image of long-term immunity. Lymphocytes have a downside though. There is a phenomenon known as tissue rejection. Now in tissue rejection, what happens is sometimes in medical fields, we want to transplant or donate parts of our body, be it blood or maybe a heart from one person to another. The thing is, if you receive any tissue which is not your own from another person, your lymphocytes, your white blood cells will think of it as harmful. They will think of it as an invader, as a foreign object. The lymphocytes will attack. Your phagocytes will also attack the transplanted tissue. This is known as tissue rejection. Of course, there is a way to lessen the chance of rejection if the protein structure of the transplanted organ is similar to the proteins of the recipient, then it is less likely that the tissue rejection will occur or at least it will not be as severe. This is why when we transplant tissue or organs from a person to another, we need to look for a match. We need to check whether the person's immune system is similar to the other person's. And one of the easiest ways to achieve this is to transplant from close relatives. Why? Because a close relative is more likely to have the same protein structures as yourself. Okay. Okay. Now the last type of cell in your blood, the platelets. Now, although I call them cells, they aren't really cells. Rather, platelets are fragments of a larger cell. We never see the larger cell in your blood. Before the platelets, there first will be a very big cell which will burst or fragment into smaller pieces. And these smaller pieces are what we call the platelets. So what are platelets for? The platelets have a very simple job, but it's not so easy to perform. They clot blood. Whenever you bleed, whenever your blood vessels are injured, the platelets will clump together and kickstart a process we call blood clotting. If a person does not have enough platelets, they can easily bleed to death or at the very least they can bleed for a very long time 